Outlander Season 7 Episode 5 was recently released and it was an episode that had multiple revelations within it. For example, fleeing Fort Ticonderoga, finding out that Roger and Bree were being watched, but most importantly, Bree discovering something in the tunnel that she was locked in by her workers when she went for her first day at the plant. It led many of us viewers to wonder what it was that she ended up walking through. So I thought I'd do a bit of digging and find out exactly what it was and explain what it is and what it could mean. So let's get into it. Here is what did Bree see in Outlander Season 7 Episode 5. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers for the TV show and the books. Oh, and as well, if you enjoy this video then feel free to hit subscribe. Thanks. What is the Blue Beam of Energy? During the episode, we saw that Bree was trapped inside of the tunnel underneath the lock that she was working at as a plant inspector. She was trapped in there by her co-workers due to the fact that she was a woman, and they didn't like the idea of their manager being a woman, which was something that showed a sign of the times, as all of the other workers that were there were male, and the interviewer was also wary of offering her the position as she was female. Whilst she was trapped in there and she was trying to navigate the space that was full of darkness and find a way out, she ultimately ended up stumbling across this blue barrier that was like a beam of energy. It had an immense sound to it, like a low rumbling drone that increased as one got closer to it, and it looked as though it was deafening. As it caused Bree to put her hands over her ears and it seemed like she was in discomfort as she had to walk through it to end up on the other side of the energy. Nothing happened when she walked through it and came out the other side of it, which was particularly interesting, and it was something that was never mentioned again throughout the duration of the episode. Not even to Roger when he asked how her first day was. At first glance, it was easy to think that this could be a time portal like we've seen in the show, such as Craig Nadan, but this was slightly different. Its presence was clear to see from the immediate off and it was ever present. It turns out that this is in fact a ley line, something that is delved into deeper in the seventh installment in the Outlander series of novels, Echo and Bone, where the scene that we saw in the episode does play out and occur in some capacity. Ley lines are an alignment between two historical structures, monuments, or standings on Earth. Within the space of these two standings, there is said to be an energy that has a geomagnetic force, and where that force is, within the context of this story, it can essentially act as a portal of some kind, and can enable an individual to go from one time period to another. However, it's said to be something that not every person can see or utilize, as it's based on having a trait, only one that's inherited by genetics, which is something that runs through the Mackenzie family, hence why maybe Bree was able to see it. Within the novel, ley lines were delved into a lot more as Roger was writing down how he perceived them to be, and the power that they held. He was documenting it all so that all of the information that Bree and himself knew about time travel would be able to be stored, and passed down for generations to come. It seems as though Bree, Roger, Jeremiah, and Amanda will most likely have the ability in order to transport to a different time period through the portal. I would also imagine that there are other portals that are out there. Ley lines are said to be relatively controversial in the modern world, and the very idea that they're real and actually exist is said to be something of legends, tales, and pseudoscience. But in this instance, it seems as though they actually are real for the Mackenzies, and it will act as some kind of time portal in the show, something which will be very interesting to see being utilized. It looks as though this is something that's going to be delved into more as the season goes on. As in the next episode of the show, we saw that Bree and Roger were looking at a map on his desk. This map had lines that were connected all around it, and were pointing towards different locations. Could these be more ley lines? This was a map of Scotland, judging by the shape of the land, and by looking at what they had put the star on, it looked as though it was in between Inverness and Moray. There is a castle that is around that area, so it does make me wonder if and why it could be of importance. Maybe another ley line and a time portal. I guess we'll see if they end up going there. The importance of the tunnel. Within the books, Rob Cameron, the individual that Bree was working with and spoke to at the end of episode 5, ends up turning into a bit of a cunning villain. With Rob meeting Roger at some point in the future and becoming a familiar face, he visits their home at a later date and analyzes some artifacts and ruins that were on the property. However, due to some snooping that he did, he ends up finding the letter that Claire and Jamie left Bree and Roger, which mentioned that Jeremiah knew the location of the Jacobite gold, something which immediately piqued Rob's interest, and a darker side to the character then emerged. 
This is something that meant that Rob puts a plan in place in order to find a way to retrieve the infamous lost treasure, and this plan involved looking to go back in time. Rob set up a play date between his nephew and Jeremiah, but it ended up being a ploy in order to try and get Jeremiah to tell him the location of the treasure. With Jeremiah missing, Roger and Bree believed that he was taken back in time and was left there, meaning that they were now without their son. But that won't actually be the case, or maybe it will in the show. But in the novel, instead, Jeremiah was actually trapped inside of the tunnel underneath the lock that Bree works at. This will then instill fear inside of Bree as she'll come to be fearful of the fact that he could end up walking through the time portal that she saw when she was trapped in there, and he could actually end up going back in time, resulting in a bigger issue than she could have ever possibly imagined. So we will see this tunnel come back in future episodes, and it's also confirmed to be a time portal, so I guess we'll have to see if it gets used in the future. The Separation of Roger and Bree One thing that the most recent episode of the show set up with the introduction of Rob Cameron and the time portal that was under the lock in the tunnel was that Roger and Bree are destined to be separated in the show as the season develops. With it looking as though the story with Rob Cameron is going to follow suit to how it did in the novel, this is ultimately going to lead Roger and Bree to be separated as they will believe that Jeremiah was taken back into the 1700s. This means that we'll see Roger go back in time in order to find him, which is going to prove to be a bit of a wasted trip, and one that doesn't amount to success, because Jeremiah obviously never went back there and was left in the tunnel underneath the lock. This will ultimately have more devastating and threatening effects for Bree. On her own, without her husband Roger, Rob Cameron will realise that, and will most likely turn more sinister in his attempt to find the secret location to where the Jacobite gold is. So we've got ourselves a main villain in the modern day that looks as though he could well be making an impact with his presence. The Blue Portal is of great significance to the show, and the job that Bree got at the plant is what's going to elevate this next part of the season as we're being given a new plot that could well lead the Mackenzies to be reunited with Bree's mother and father far sooner than they ever anticipated. So, there you have it. What did Bree see in Outlander Season 7 Episode 5? If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button, or alternatively you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of episode 5? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.